We are in crisis, left behind, always harder, seldom kind. Then we feel what might be missed is the power of an optimist. The question we always ask worldwide when we're talking on happiness is whether the glass is half full or half empty. Well, I promise you that will give the answer today to that question. But then we have to go back to our personal youth. We all have to go back to our personal youth. You have become an ambassador of creativity. You're an ambassador of courage, of innovation, of organization. We all are ambassadors of some strength. Where did we learn that? Personally, when, when I was a kid of four or five years old, I, my father was a salesman and he took me to small grocery shops in Limburg, that's a small province in Belgium, and I turned upside down an old vegetable box and I was standing on it and reciting poems. And then I got an ice cream. I've got lots of ice cream in my youth. And in fact, when I'm talking today on this, what did they do? They, they turned an old vegetable box upside down, I'm standing on it, reciting a poem, and I hopefully get an ice cream afterwards. That's the way it works. We have all become the people we have become thanks to positive strength, thanks to someone who has told you you're good in something. We learn through support, through positive engagement, through encouraging each other. We don't learn anything through cynicism or through indifference. When I was traveling the world, I met in uh, Nepal and in India the world namaste. Namaste means hello, but when an American says hello, hello doesn't mean anything. Namaste means three things. I bow for the God in you. I've seen you, there is something positive in you, and I bow for that deeply. Teachers tell this to students, students to teachers all over, every day, 100 times. I've seen you, there is a positive strength in you, and I bow deeply for that. Well, that, wouldn't we live in another world if people would say that and mean that? And life is not a party. I'm not driving the country in a car full of balloons. It's, uh, we all have our right on sadness. If I open the door of your heart, there is a lot of sa sadness and, and trouble and sorrow in it. We all have that. It's not about that. I, I, I just don't hate, I, I hate the song, don't worry, be happy. I changed the, the motto in do worry, be happy. There is something going wrong in the world, but it doesn't mean that we can't be happy. Everyone is looking for happiness all over. It's a universal quest. And I asked 100 professors in 50 countries to summarize in 1,000 words what we know about happiness. Not what we believe, but what we know about happiness. Well, we found out that we have been focusing on the wrong things. We have been studying in psychology, sociology, economics, that's what it's about. It's not about only about philosophy, it's not about sunflowers and, and balloons, it's about science. And we've been studying the wrong things. We know quite a lot about schizophrenia, uh, paranoia, but most of the people are not schizophrenic or paranoia. The opposite of bad is not bad, but that's not the same as good. The opposite of unhappy is not unhappy, but that's not the same as happy. So when we could study what makes people happy and broaden that knowledge, we could become happier citizens. And we know the relationship between uh, optimism and, and happiness is quite big, it's quite important. The relationship between smoking and lung cancer is, as, is the same as the relationship between uh, optimism and, and happiness. When you smoke, you get lung cancer. When you are an optimist, you become happy. And when you're happier, you're healthier and successful in sports, in science, in friendship. Why don't you want to become an optimist? We know out of science that 50% of optimism is about genetics. It's about what we got from our parents, our grandparents, and so on. So, 10% is due to the circumstances. That's the house we have, the job we have. 40% is left for what is between our ears. That's the mindset. That's the way we look at things. This 50% of genetics we cannot change. This 10% of circumstances we're focusing all day long. And the 40% is what we have in our own hands. Don't you think that um, happy people experience more happy things than unhappy people? 
we all experience more or less the same things in our lives. But the optimists give a double weight to the positive things and the, neg and the pessimists give a double weight to the negative things. That's the, that's the choice we have. Optimism is a combination of belief and behavior. You start believing that things co will come out and you behave like that. Well, one of the professors taught me the lesson that there are red buttons and green buttons in society. The red buttons are the pessimists, the green buttons are the optimists. And you can see that immediately when you talk to someone in three minutes, I immediately know whether you're a green button or a red button. Shall I teach you? You can know that in three minutes. The red buttons are always talking about themselves, the past, and problems. The green buttons are talking about we, us, the future, and solutions. It's not about I, it's about we. It's not about the past, it's about the future. It's not about problems, it's about solutions. And when you succeed in connecting the green buttons in an organization, in a school, in a street, in your family, the red buttons become irrelevant. Some women came to me, last, woman, last week she said, well, that's nice about the green buttons and the red buttons, but I'm married to a red button. What do I have to do now? <laughs> so, we know that uh, uh, optimism and pessimism is spreading like, like a virus. It's like a virus. It's uh, as well the optimism as the pessimism. You know that. When someone enters who is an optimist, you become an optimist yourself. And we see that in the studies, that regions full of optimists, they influence each other. Work floors influence each other. And I'm not talking about stupid things. It's only f a few weeks ago, the, world, the United Nations have, for the first time in, the, in, in history, published a world report on happiness. And that's full of statistics that really prove that a new priority is needed. And we're talking in that report on grass national, not only on the grass national product, but on grass, gross national happiness. It, this is a system that works in Bhutan, as you know, a country in the Himalayas. And the prime minister of Bhutan was invited to New York to come and talk there. It's, we, were, we have been laughing at Bhutan, but now it has become an example of good practice. And they are not only measuring work, they are measuring harmony, work and the hours of sleep. They are, work, they, are, they are measuring physical health and mental health. They're measuring in education, knowledge and values. It's about harmony and we can learn quite a lot of that. Yes, indeed, Herman van Rompuy wrote a letter to 200 leaders of the world to make happiness, hope and positive thinking, quality of life in our policies and in our social behavior a priority. And I was glad I was holding his hand while he was writing that letter. <laughs> so, the quotes he says, I know uh, the cynics will immediately dismiss these proposals as naive, but positive thinking is no longer something for drifters and dreamers. It's a science. We can measure it and we can do positive interventions. If we measure on a scale of 10, Zimbabwe has 2.8 on happiness, China 6.4, Denmark 8.3. There is an influence of social policy on the numbers of people who are happy. And we can change that. And we can make these new priorities. Do you know that how many people, when you see the publicity of, of, of lotteries worldwide, it's always about sunshine and palm trees. I don't know whether you know whether how, how much palm trees there are in Denmark, but not that very much. It's not about sunshine. When we compare the most happy countries to the, less, to, the, to the countries that are not happy at all, we don't see a difference in sunshine or palm trees. It is about trust. When people trust each other and trust the institutions, they're more happy. And when there is more equality in a country, then people are happier. The rich and the poor, the men and the women. Everybody can be happier and let's go for a happier world for all. And not only for less misery, for, but for a, for a better world. The best sold sign in the West is not anymore welcome, but beware of the dog. Beware of the dog. We have become afraid of everything. There is fear, fear of everything. We are afraid of the Muslims, of the Chinese, of everything. And close down in our houses, we are killing ourselves in suicides. We have bought our dogs and our alarm systems. But the great problem in our society is not aggression or violence. It's about solitude. In our houses is fear. Well, we can change that. And uh, 
the media play an important role on that. There has been a time that journals were called, they are Spiegel, the mirror. They are not the mirror of society anymore. They have become the keyholes of society, focusing on conflict, on conflict and measuring conflict all again and again, people making, making people afraid. We have quite a lot of studies that people who have seen the journal and then read the papers have become more and more afraid. The reality is the same, but they become afraid reading all these stories. They are focusing on a message of distrust and fear. Do you know what the opposite of fear is? The opposite of fear is hope. And the crisis is an opportunity. Do you know the pessimists will never solve the crisis? There, have, there has never been built a statue for a pessimist. There are more optimists in the world. There are more. But the pessimists make more noise. You know that at meetings and gatherings, the pessimists make always the more no noise. The, the pessimists are, are still living in the holes and the caves. The optimists have come out of the caves and the holes, watching for the fire, watching for the future, and publicity knows that very well. Watches all over are always pictured at 10 past 10. Would you buy this watch when it would be 20 past 7? You wouldn't buy it. It's the smile that sells. Well, if that tell me, if that, tell me that happiness doesn't sell, I don't believe that. Do you know what's the best sold meal in the world? Happy meals. Don't tell me that happiness doesn't sell. But it is not about pleasure. We found out in the, in the positive psychology, we thought that happiness was about pleasure. It's not about pleasure. It's not about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I, have, I hope you have lots of it, but you won't be happy from that. It is about satisfaction. We are moving from a money economy to a satisfaction economy. And there are five elements that build up our satisfaction worldwide. These five elements built up our satisfaction. The first thing is the quality of our relationships, the most important thing, our family, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors. The second thing is our health. Optimists live longer. They live longer. They have better immune systems. And it's about work. Work doesn't give only an income. Work gives structure and meaning to life. Losing your work and your job is as important as losing your wife. It is, it is dangerous. And in regions in which people have l less uh, employment, they are less happy as well. Money is important, but not that important as we thought. When you have once enough money to cover the basic needs, more money makes you more jealous, more envy, more trouble, more competition. So more money doesn't make us more happy. That's the reason why Mexico, for instance, is uh, happier than France. The gross national product in Mexico is one-tenth of that of France. And the last thing that is important for our uh, uh, satisfaction is freedom. It's about freedom. Not only political freedom, democracy, but the freedom in the choice we can make. And then we can go for a movement for happiness. That's not naive. That's, we're, we're meeting people all over the world. I'm traveling as an ambassador of happiness and quality of life now, all over the world. And we meet quite a lot of people who are really expressing their dreams in the factories, in business, in schools, all over. We have seen that the old priorities don't work. So it's not a question that we don't know what to do. We don't do what we know. And then we need infospiration, evidence-based material. We will not change the world by information, we'll change the world by inspiration. And meetings like this will inspire people. Based on evidence-based knowledge, evidence -based knowledge, we'll inspire people by infospiration. In a complex world, people have lost their way. It's a labyrinth, it has become a labyrinth. But we make each other happen. Not only we make each other happy, we make each other happen. Let's become trustful lighthouses for each other. And everybody has that strength in himself. We, are not, we're, we don't have to wait that long anymore. We don't see the things and the people as they are. We see the things as, and the people as we are. So we don't have to change the things and the people. We have to change ourselves. And that's merely the way we look at things. There was a grandfather who came to me in the Netherlands after lecture, and he told me, I have eight grandchildren. And he showed me a picture of a young girl of uh, 15 years old, fair-haired, and he said, this is my favorite grandchild. She's born blind, but when I walk with her through the woods and the city, I hear more, I smell more, I see more, I feel more. She's the pearl of, of our family. He could easily have been said, well, she's born blind and that's the burden of our family. He could not change that reality. He could change the way he looked at that reality. And that's the final answer. Is this glass half full? 
or is it half empty? Well, we know, we know. Stop looking at your life and your work like this glass. Watch, watch your life and your, and your work and your family and your own strengths like this glass. There's the same water in it, but if you keep on focusing on all the things you don't have and you still aspire and you want and you want, you will never become happy. When you're satisfied with the life you have and you see quite a lot of strengths you have, quite a lot of possibilities, experiences, things you have done, you have felt, my God, and luckily this glass is not full. It is a stupid thing to think that we will be happy for 100% one day. It's stupid. It's not the aim. But we have the choice to look at our life like this glass, full of emptiness and things we will never achieve, or see what is the strength, and still leave some certain things that will set us goals, that make us believe that we can set some goals, that we can still do something. Light has been discovered in darkness. And the only thing you really need on the journey of your life is this thing. And I wish this thing to accompany you all wherever you go. It's a telescope. A telescope has dramatically changed the way we look at the stars. A pessimist focuses on all the troubles at the end and paralyzed by fear, he will never come into action. An optimist focuses on all the possibilities and dreams and driven by hope, he comes into action. And of course he knows there are some obstacles, but a telescope has this universal characteristic that you can turn it around. And that obstacle that might seem a huge obstacle might be a small one, and you will come into action. A pessimist focuses on who he is. An optimist focuses on whom he might become. To the man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. To the man with a telescope, everything looks like a thing that can be seen from a new perspective. I wish you all a very good telescope in the journey of your life.